All right, it's just after 4 o'clock on Thursday, March 14th, 2019. We have a quorum, just barely, but we do have a quorum. Yay. So I call this library board meeting to order. First item, uh, everyone should have gotten packets that uh, Paulina handed out prior to the meeting and should have received them electronically via email. So the first item is the approval of the agenda, which is set before us either in your packet or on our our tablets. Um, so I will uh, I will move that we approve the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Do we have any other business or edits to take care of, Paulina? Um, I would suggest um, updating Skylight and um, roof update um, since we have Elwood Sable, the building yep, official here. Yep, we're going to do that right after we do the approval of the agenda in the minutes. So he'll be, he'll be up first. All right, any other further discussion? All right, hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Any appro opposed? All right, motion carried. Now we'll approve the minutes from the February 14th, 2019 Library Board meeting. Uh, I will make a motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the Library Board meeting from last month. Anybody, uh, any corrections, additions, changes we know of? All right, hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Now, first thing up is uh, Elwood Zabel is going to give us an update on the skylight situation. All right, on the skylight, we uh, <laughs> met with our three local roofing contractors. We had talked about removing the skylight and just doing an infill um, and roofing it over. Um, we did get some ideas on it. The ideas weren't something that came up and just said, yeah, let's do it right away. Um, we're still looking at roughly about half the cost of doing the infill as it would requ require to replace the skylight. Um, I did make contact with the distributor today. Um, the skylight here at City Hall, we need to put a recoding on it. When we do that, he's going to come down and take a look at the skylight at the library again and see if there's something that we can do that he's got some ideas that he's seen in other places that we can maybe do something with that. So those ideas would be like repairing the existing one or would it be replacing or? Well, one of the, one of the ideas was um, just, uh, it's not leaking now. The skylight isn't leaking. It's just that the panels on the New Ulm South side are delaminating, which is this skylight, the panels are part of the structural integrity of the, of the skylight itself. Um, one of the thoughts was um, to just put uh, roofing over the top of the skylight just to enclose it and keep it that way instead of taking it off and trying to infill the, the uh, hole that at, the, at the base of the, where the skylight is sitting on. Um, he said that has been done in the past, but we'd have to verify the structural stability of the, of the skylight itself. Um, but he said he's, he's seen some other options out there he wants to come back and verify what this okay. one looks like again and and go from there so right. sometime once the weather clears and it gets above 40 degrees they're going to be down to redo the skylight here so um he'll schedule a trip down at the same time and we'll take a look at the library skylight at all that right. time well we look forward to hearing from you with all the various options that we have and the associated costs and yep. okay so and the roof leaks um the, what the, by the circulation desk to the New Ulm North side, that roof is scheduled for replacement this year. Okay. We're working on a bid package for that. Uh, get our local, three local guys up there to take a look and give us yep. a bid, but that'll probably be late summer, early fall before they're gonna get to it from what I've heard there. So we may have to bear with it for yeah. the fall, we may be able the spring. Throw some patches and stuff on it to, in the meantime okay. once we find where the leaks are. But right now it's, it's hit or miss, I think, on that one. Yeah, it's covered right now and trying to spend the dollars of shoveling and getting it out. Yeah. Sounds like we have no new leaks appeared from what the custodian has told me. Um, so we're just mitigating what we've got right now and, and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for the update. Any questions for Elwood? Are there any other leaks right now on the roof other than over the circulation desk or is that the only one um that's there are more um on the higher roof um to the south side of the um service desk um 
kind of uh, like where the skylight is, but like between the, the roof that's being replaced and going towards fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And it migrated a little bit to the upstairs. And we have um, some small slow leaks in the doorway of children's, which is something we've had in the past before. Right. Correct, yeah. So do we anticipate we're going to take care of those at the time that this section gets re-roofed or just live with more leaks? Well, the higher roof, um, that roof is, we're thinking approximately 10 years old. So that would probably be come under um, getting patched. That wouldn't get replaced. The lower roof um, to the north of the circulation desk is, like I said, scheduled to be replaced this, this year. So that, that would be a whole new roof up there. But there again, it's the way it's configured, there is four rooftop units in that area. And we've got the flat roof and then there's a built up section that stands about four, four and a half feet tall. That's probably 20, 30 feet long by 12 feet wide. That's a big return air plenum, a common return air plenum for, for the rooftop units. So we've got, that's where we found leaks last year was in the inside of that. Um, so there's many issues up there that we got to contend with and trying to, trying to roof around it and, and get them taken care of. Do you anticipate that when the roofers come to replace that roof that's scheduled for replacement, that they at that time will seal up or patch up the other leaks in the roof? We'll, pro we'll address those other leaks probably sooner than that. Sooner than that? Yeah, because like I said, I don't think we'll see the re-roofing of that roof probably till late summer, early, early fall. Um, talking with the, the local guys and their, and their schedule already, they were, they're filling up pretty quick. Since that roof was original, do you have any idea how much has been spent to re-roof and patch that roof up to this point? I'd have to go back. I think I looked at that last fall. There was one major replace or replacement or um, fixing that was, I believe, around $18,000. Um, for one section, um, and then there'd been numerous other small patch jobs for a few thousand apiece. What do you anticipate the cost of this re-roofing this summer to cost? I'm guessing probably in that 70,000, 80,000 range, give or take. What would a new roof over the entire building cost? <laughs> uh, way more than that. <laughs> As then we're talking all kinds of structure and and I don't know if the the building itself would be able to hold the structure that would be going up there because then we'd have to deal with getting that load all the way down to the footings. Uh, something like that, then it's replacement, tear up and put down new, right? It's not layover. Correct, yes. They would, wait, it's a ballasted roof. Um, so we take the ballast off, tear off the, the EPDM rubber roofing, and then we would check and see what, if we've got wet or deteriorated insulation and replace that as needed. And then put, put the new roofing material over it and put the ballast back on and away we go. Thank you. Yep. All right. Anything else for Elwood? All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Elwood. Thank you. All right. Then next, uh, we're going to head into the financial report. So, Paulina. Okay. Um, we are 17.53% through 2019, and our budget is approximately 9.7% expended. Um, this month we had some office supply spills that came through, including Kemsky and um, Minitex for patron library cards. Um, contractional maintenance um, building bills included um, a gawk sheet metal uh, to reset, reset um, a unit in the children's room and to price a control board, um, runnings for um, snowblower repair and expected uh, remittances um, to uh, gawk sheet metal for the replacement sink in the lower level, which is over um, 2000, the new Ulm glass spill for the glass replacement, um, and um, 
other um, monthly bills or quarterly bills um, and special events programming bills, including um, prep for our, the summer reading program. So Elwood mentioned, and it was also in the article in the paper about a section of the roof being slated to be replaced this year. Mm -hmm. Can you remind us where where that's pulled out of the budget? Sure, that is actually um, out of one of the capital improvement funds. Okay. So it's not under c contractual maintenance no, for the will building. No, it will not be. No. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else? Any other questions regarding the financial report? Okay, if not, then we'll move on to the librarian's report, and we'll start with the library department activities report and statistics. Paulina? Okay, um, uh, the new youth services librarian uh, started on February the 1st. We're very excited to have her on board. Um, she as well, um, the assistant library director and acquisitions librarian have been spending time with her focusing on program planning, publicity, grant writing, and purchasing. Um, and the children's department has started planning for the 2019 summer reading program already. Um, I've been training the new um, middle school library staff on the Sierra ILS. Um, it's the integrated library system that they're using to check out um, materials that um, were occurring over to them um, as part of the new all middle school library card project. So weekly deliveries of materials have commenced um, and we're probably averaging about a, a buck box or so a week, which is pretty good. Um, it's a little actually more than I expected, which, but that's not a bad thing. So um, it's um, going pretty well so far. Um, um, adult at basic education um, is teaching a series of computer literacy classes at the library, and it's a seven week series that started on March the 4th. Um, the first sessions of the Becoming American documentary series have gone well. Um, the quality of the documentaries and the liveliness of the discussion following the um, screenings have been impressive. Uh, and the Wandagaka Sculpture Committee met on March 7th and discussed um, the addition of a plaque to identify um, the Wandagaka um, sculpture, and they will uh, reconvene um, once codes are obtained um, for the plaque. So they're going to fund all that then? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. do we have to do any kind we, of approvals if they want to mount it on yes, there? Yes, potentially. If they've, yeah, depending on where they're going to mount it, they're um, looking at a part of the building, I believe. So. Oh, it's not like, going to be on the statue itself. It's I don't be believe. I think it's like right behind it on one oh. of the pillars. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions for? Pauline, regarding the library, librarian's report? Pauline, I was just going to ask when you mentioned about the uh, new youth librarian uh, coming on board. Mm -hmm. are, are you caught, caught up with staffing uh, recruitments and replacements? Of um, I believe so. Um, more or less, yes. <laughs> <laughs> more or less. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> we are fully staffed yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so next we'll move into the strategic plan. Paulina? Yes, um, this is just a refresher of what um, the 2018-2022 strategic plan is. Um, and then um, if the library board um, just wanted to take a look, if there's anything we should add at this point, I think um, I think it's um, good to go for the year um, in terms of um, I don't see any additions that we need to make at this point. All righty. Now we'll move into the programming. April? Um, in our upcoming adult programs, um, we have on March, Tuesday, March 19th at 6.30 p.m., we had the Minnesota Valley Civil War Roundtable. That presentation has been canceled this month. Um, there was a last minute conflict with the speaker's schedule and it's a little late now to ask another presenter to put together a program. So we're canceling that program for this month. Um, we'll reconvene the third Tuesday in April. On Thursday, March 21st at 6 p.m. and on Thursday, March 28th at 6 p.m. Um, we have the last two sessions of the Becoming American Document 
documentary film and discussion series. Um, like Paulina said, we've had some good discussion. Um, the documentaries are really high quality, so we've really been enjoying those. Um, we've averaged around um, 15 to 20 people each week, so it's actually a good size for the discussion. We would have liked to have a bigger audience for the grant, but it's been really good for the discussions we've been having, so it's manageable that way. On Tuesday, March 26th at 10 a.m., we have the Lady Long writer, author Bernice Endy. Um, this is a partnership with Castle. She'll be coming to the New Ulm Community Center to present. She has been um, riding by horseback around the country, um, coming to different communities and speaking about her travels. Um, this is, I think, not the first time she's done a trip like this. So she's got a lot of experience. Um, my understanding is that she's in her 70s. So mm. it's quite the undertaking for her. And um, she's an experienced speaker, so we're excited to have her. On Tuesday, March 26th, the same day, at 6.30 p.m. in the evening at the library, we have the League of Women Voters who are hosting a book discussion about A Good Time for the Truth, Race in Minnesota, um, which is a book of 16 ep excuse me, 16 essays um, by Minnesota authors who are either immigrants or people of color or both, and they're talking about their experiences um, with race in Minnesota. Copies of that book are available for checkout at our service desk. On Friday, March 29th at 8.30 p.m., we have an edition. Um, Paulina is going to lead an Introduction to Ancestry Library edition. Um, registration is required for that class, so people can call the library at 359-8331 to register or stop by our service desk. On Tuesday, April 2nd at 10 p.m., we're partnering with Castle again to offer a bird watching program with Al Bat, and this will again be at the New Home Community Center. In this region, he's a well-known naturalist and bird watcher, and he um, does humor writing and nature writing for a variety of publications and has been nationally recognized for um, his contributions to the bird watching community. So we're excited to have him present. He'll talk about um, kind of an introduction to bird watching and species you can find in this area. So we're excited to have him. And those both of those partnerships with Castle are open to the public. <coughs> And then on Wednesday, April 10th at 12 p.m., um, Dick Kimmel and Kelly Coyle will pre perform at Noon Tunes at the library. Um, they play bluegrass music with a variety of instruments, so we're excited to host them. For upcoming children's events, um, story time has moved to Mondays at 10 a.m. That started um, Monday, March 11th, so we no longer have our... Um, Wednesday morning story time, we're having it on Mondays now going forward. Lego Club is starting up again on Thursday, March 28th at 3.30 p.m. They'll meet the fourth Thursday of the month through the end of May. Um, so they'll meet from 3.30 to 5 p.m. and they'll have building projects and free build for the kids. Um, and that was a really popular program for us before, so we're excited to have that one back. The Wanda Gog birthday party that was supposed to be on Saturday, March 9th, was postponed due to the weather. Um, that has been moved to Saturday, March 30th at 1 p.m. Um, we're partnering with the Wanda Gog House Association, so there'll be a reading of Wanda's book, The Funny Thing, and then we'll have some snacks and activities for the kids. So um, everyone is welcome for that program as well. All right, any questions for April? Alrighty, and we'll move on to the 2018 annual library report. Paulina? I'm gonna move around a little bit. Um, While you're doing that, we'll have to get John Ingebrigtsen to update his drawing here. It's a little oh. outdated. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Commission him to redo it. Yep, we need the statue on it and a couple yep, of trees gone. And the, mm -hmm. the library and sign. The new library sign yep. I think that's how he had it when he did it. Okay. I'm not sure if there's any there other way. Go. Okay. So the 2018 annual report review. Um, this is in some um, in supplement to um, 
the Minnesota Library uh, report that we will be approving shortly. Um, our door count um, went up quite a bit. Um, uh, between 2006 and 2017, um, it was based on statistics gathered four weeks out of the year. Um, from 2018 on, it was based on um, door counters. So um, our, we see about um, <coughs> 100,000 patrons a year. Um, reference questions are actual numbers tallied by staff in children's and adult services, and that is a little bit less than last year at over 10,971, and that's, I think, a natural um, fluctuation. Um, most libraries see that. Um, public computer use is down. It includes statistics from public internet stations, iPads, and microfilm reader and scanner. Um, however, with the addition of our wireless, um, it does go up. Um, our wireless usage was at um, 25,000 um, in 2018, which saw about a 6,000 um, uh, increase. Um, our total circulation of physical materials is at 158,341, um, and that's an increase over last year. Um, we saw a jump in both fiction and magazines um, within the last year. Our um, circulation at New Ulm Library, comparable to the interlibrary loan, we send out to others. Um, so we we send out about 23,874 out to um, different libraries in um, the Traverse to Sioux region, as well as um, to other libraries in um, Minnesota through MinLink. And then the circulation of electronic materials, um, we are at um, 5,804. 40 ebooks and serials and um, 2,731 e audiobooks. And that's mostly through um, our overdrive. And that's a comparison between our e materials versus um, physical materials. So our patrons still like physical books. <laughs> 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 We're about, um, it's about um, five. Um, uh, only 5% of our um, circulation. Um, this is average number of checkouts per borrower. Um, it's about 22.4. And our physical materials owned is at 78,892 as of 2018. Um, a total website page views. Um, we Our total website page views for the year was um, 188,800 um, views with a big jump in June, it looks like, this year. So I think that was partly due to summer registrations were happening through the website. Um, our adult programming, um, we did about 193 adult programs um, and had an attendance over, over 3,500 individuals. Our youth um, was at seven and we had about 65. That's um, young adults. And um, children's programming, we did about 151 programs with um, attendance rate of uh, 6,500 um, kids. Um, some of the things that we achieved in 2018 included uh, being awarded the Memory Lab um, Network Grant, um, the Becoming American Grant, which we're um, doing right now, the Library Cards for All pilot program with New Alma Middle School. We started the process of um, discussing the Chrome box installation, uh, the Wanda Agog statue unveiling, and we streamlined um, book processing over the year. Um, some 2019 goals include um, continuing our flooring replacement project, um, reform the children's room committee to evaluate the children's place, implement the memory lab network grant, um, examine current programs for all ages for gaps in variety and subjects, and continuing fo um, focusing staff training on customer service. And then thank you for your support of uh, New Ulm Public Library. Um, the success of uh, the library is due to the great service provided by library staff. Um, the support of the city of New Ulm, the library board, the friends of the um, New Ulm Public Library, our faithful volunteers, and the numerous organizations who partner with us to meet the needs of our loyal patrons. Thank you for making 2018 another great year in the library. 
Are there any questions for Paulina on this? For the Chromebox installation mm -hmm. and conversion, uh, how is things going with that? Is They're going well. Um, we haven't had any major um, issues. Um, so it's the actually the staff has been able to handle any kind of questions that arise. Yes, have. and okay. then if we don't know any answers, we um, ask. Um, uh, Seth Erickson, who's the TDS administrator um, out um, in Mankato, and he's been a great help too in terms of tech support, things like that. But for the most part, he says even on his end, a lot of the regional oh, ooh, excuse me <laughs> um, libraries are going towards Chromeboxes, and his tech um, support tickets have gone tremendously down in the last month. Uh, in the last nine job. months since the yeah. more libraries are going to Chromeboxes, yeah. And it's great because it automatically does all the updates there's no um regular updates that we have to do um going into windows things like that so it's really great it's very um um low maintenance so, yes so thank you <laughs> low windows, maintenance windows, it's very low when, maintenance when those updates happen mm -hmm. uh, i know at work when the windows happen uh, updates happen mm -hmm. i got a little screen that comes up saying you know it's time for this update do you want to do it now or, mm -hmm. or do it later kind of thing and then if i log off that's when it initiates the mm -hmm. update, and then when I log back on, is that the same kind of thing <coughs> for, for updates, or how do they get done, or do they get done like in the off hours? They or? get done in the off hours. Usually, with it doesn't see any. We don't see them during the day. So Good. Yeah. Yeah, I would add to that yeah. that I don't think we're having nearly the hardware issues that we are. Right, the yeah. the things that we're running into is just learning how to work with the new system and mm -hmm. teaching our patrons that. But. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, we were with userful. We were having issues with, you know, a computer wasn't connecting, or we couldn't figure out why the mouse didn't work, and those kind of things. And we're just having way less of that with the Chrome well, boxes. Good. So it sounds like there's lots less issues with that. It's going smoothly, and overall, this was a less expensive program too, oh, yes. correct? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's good. All right. Now we got a couple action items. <coughs> we got two resolutions. The first one being 2019-04, approving the acquisitions of Dell Ironcloud print, featuring the winter scene 2018. Dennis Warda, longtime Noam resident and friend of Noam Library, is donating to the library a Dell Ironcloud featuring a winter scene, which was created in 2018. The Noam Library Board must approve any artwork donated to the library. After approval of this resolution, a letter of thanks will be prepared by the library director, directed to Mr. Warder and to Mr. Ironcloud. And there is a there was a picture included in the electronic mm -hmm. copy. It's in color. <laughs> yeah, it was in color too. Yep. <laughs> Looks better. Um, so I will then entertain a motion to approve the acquisition of the Dell Ironcloud print featuring the winter scene 2018. I'll move that. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? What's the size of the print, Pauline? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what do you think it is? Um, maybe 18 by 12, something like 18 inches by 12 yeah. inches, something like that. Do you have a, a place for it to hang, or? Um, we were probably uh, thinking of um, doing it by um, his other one over um, at the patron computers. Oh. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. That was my question too. Mm -hmm. All right, then all in favor of approving the acquisition of the Dell Iron Cloud print, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Now we get the second resolution. Resolution 2019-05, approving the Minnesota Single Library Report 2018 for the Noam Public Library. By state law, the submission of the 2018 Minnesota Single Public Library Report for Noam Public Library is a submission of the library board and must be approved by it. Attached is a copy of the report for the Noam Public Library as prepared by the library director, Paulina Poplaska. And there is pages and pages of data. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go into it. And she kind of gave some of the information in her presentation with the uh, facts and figures that we just went through. Um, so I will entertain a motion to approve the Minnesota Single Public Library Report for 2018. So move. 
Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Are there any things that jump out at us, Pauline, that you want to make us aware of that, you know, one way or the other either rises or declines or? Not really. Um, I did see our, um, I can't find it now, uh, our e um, resources were down over last year, but that was also um, because we weren't doing as many ancestry classes. Um, so I think uh, we'll get that back up to our normal. We do have our faithful um, patrons who do utilize um, the subscription. So I think just more interest and more visibility will help that number go back up. Okay, any other questions? All right, then all in favor of approving the Minnesota Single Public Library Report for 2018, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Any other business? Well, you know, nope. or April, nope. nothing. Okay, so then uh, we even have on the agenda, we have an adjournment. <laughs> item, item. Wow. <laughs> so that being said, I uh, will consider this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.